what it's about. Divide, manipulate, control. Keep people at each other's throats so that we don't understand that we have common interests. And that's the name of the game. Whether it's uh, presented by this, 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 this predator drone missile uh, uh, NDAA signing uh, uh, president who shredded the U.S. Constitution, Barack Obama, or whether it's by any other representative of a system that, quite frankly, and I hope I'm not out of line saying this, but any other representative, a uh, so-called representative of the people, because we're not represented by them, Democrats or Republicans, who dares to tell the truth. Telling the truth these days is subversive, my friend. Wow. Uh, Larry Pinckney is our guest. We're going to go to break here, sir. I want to come back and tell your story there in the early days of the Black Panther Party, what it was, what they did to it, uh, and, and tell people what you and others went through. And, and, and as you said, the congressional hearings, folks, you can pull them up on COINTELPRO from the 70s. But the church committee, there were others. I'm going from memory. He can correct me. But, I mean, it was killing people, getting other people to kill them, uh, setting them up. I mean, just, just you name it. And people stood up to it, so they backed off for a while. But now the last decade or so, I mean, it is full on. And, folks, it's so bad. I just tried to cover a military drill once. I've told this story probably 50 times. Mike Hansen saw it. Brother trying to cover a drill at night in Florida. And a guy just jumps out of the bushes, starts setting fires, and then blaming it on us. Turned out he was with the Army. I mean, folks, let me tell you, that means they feel pretty darn invincible if they'll do stuff like that. All right, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. Larry Pinckney, um, veteran from right there at the start, Black Panther Party member. Um, of course, the new Black Panther Party today is something completely different from my view. It, a bunch of provocateurs I mean, the stuff they're saying sounds like what you would say to discredit a group of people but i understand getting angry and stuff i mean i'm sure i've done things before that aren't perfect but when it's consistent you can really see really see what's going on larry uh, uh you've got the floor of this little six minute segment describe your experiences tell us what the black panther party was really founded for black panther party and thank you so much alex the the black panther party was founded on what was a 10-point program. The 10-point program was essentially a very clear, distinct, and simple program that called for very specific things like clothing, medical care, jobs, schooling, i.e. education, etc. Very simple, very direct, and by the way, very threatening to the U.S. government. Isn't that amazing? The Black Panther Party I personally was involved in a number of programs as a member of the party, including programs to serve uh, the people with breakfast programs. And people sometimes have heard about the Black Panther Party's breakfast programs where we fed throughout this nation, especially children, but anyone didn't have to be a child. And by the way, didn't have to be black either. Uh, we fed food, good food to folks who were hungry. You know what? That this was before be the school lunch program. Oh, way before the school lunch program. Yes, definitely. In fact, a number of the school lunch programs actually came about as a result of what the party had, we call it the party, what the party had done. Yeah, I'd read that. That's true. That is very accurate. Also, we had what was called free, uh, free clinic, free medical programs. There's a book out that uh, it's actually quite recent, uh, Alex. I'm, I have it right here. It, the book is called Body and Soul. Body and Soul, the Black Panther Party in the Fight Against Medical Discrimination. Now, uh, it's by Alondra, A-L-O-N-D-R-A, Nelson. I would urge folks of all colors and both genders, read the book. Come to your own conclusion. It's well documented with original sources, okay? Now, as, as a Panther, as a member of the party, uh, one of my first jobs, and I suppose that's because of how I speak, was I was sent to communicate with people of all colors, including my brother, white folk, okay? Because I spoke, I suppose, in such a way that was considered to be very clear, very simple, and 
quote unquote non threatening. I spoke in a way and still speak in a way that is about the common interests of the people, the common interests. What do we have in common? Let's go for that. Let's struggle for that. As a result of my activities, uh, and you can read about this, your, your listeners and viewers can read about it in a book entitled Saying No to Power, Saying No to Power by William M. Mandel, William M. Mandel, M-A-N-D-E-L, uh, introduction by Howard Zinn. And just go to the book and you can go, you can read the details of some of the things that I did in the party. But as a result of what I did, I and many, many, many others were viciously set up. And when I say viciously, my brother, I pull no punches. I do mean viciously. There are, there is no depth, D-E-P-T-H. There is no depth as to how low this government will go. And I say it in not only the past tense, but the present tense. Okay, and we need to be aware of that. Don't be paranoid, but be aware. Be conscious, okay? As 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 a reverend used, uh, as a man that I knew who happened to be a reverend used to say to me, "Just because I'm paranoid doesn't mean it's not happening." Okay, and let's be aware of what's going on so that we can effectively organize collectively, i.e., together against it. I'm very proud of the fact that uh, I I served the people, body and soul as did so many thousands of others in the party. There are many political prisoners today, to this very day, the year 2012, that still languish in U.S. prison gulags throughout this nation. Well, let's, we're going to go to break. 18-minute segment coming up, the longest segment of the hour. Um, Larry Pinckney's our guest. When we come back, let's, you're going to have some time. Because, okay. the, because everything I read about and, and have talked to folks that was happening then, they're now hyping it back up taking out a deep freeze. It was always still going on, but it seems like it's it's accelerating. So I personally want to know what to look for because I've, I've, I've been at the receiving end of some of this, nothing compared to what you've received. We'll be right back. We're on the march. The empire's on the run. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll hear people on this show who you could call extreme right wing, left wing, libertarian, anarchist, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Catholic, and people always try to pigeonhole us and say, oh, you know, he had this guy on or he had that guy on. And, and again, I'm not apologizing for anybody I have on the show. I have people on here who, who I respect for their courage, even if I don't agree with all their political views. And I have people on here who are experts in their areas because I want to learn and I want to ask questions. And I know you want that information as well. That's why we'll have somebody on who is for a gold standard like Ron Paul. Then we'll have somebody on who's for state banks or somebody who's for federally controlled fiat currency with 0% interest, which if you're going to have a government model, that's the way to do it, boy. <laughs> I mean, you're going to have racing economies if you do that. That's what we had in this country for, for over 100 years. There are a lot of different systems. And, and, and so it's not schizophrenic that I'm, or, 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 or it's not contradictory that, that we jump around because I'm trying to figure it all out. Now, on the subject of COINTELPRO, uh, I live in one of the few states where the state got caught doing it in congressional stuff, and it got suspended, what, 1979, 1980. And I've been on the receiving end of the State Police Intelligence Bureau. Uh, they never tried to set me up for anything criminal, but I don't like being surveilled by them. Uh, the feds, it's different. Uh, I mean, I just tried to cover the Army one time. Mike Hansen was there. They were doing this takeover drill in Brooksville, Florida. And I mean, the neighbors were coming out of their houses going, you're Alex Jones. The army came by and said, don't talk to you. Uh, and, I, and I'd never run into something like this. I was just covering, you know, these gun confiscation drills. And they tried to set us up. They broke in our hotel room. Uh, they had a guy jump out and start setting fires. I mean, I'm just by the municipal airport standing there. And a guy jumps out and starts lighting fires saying I'm doing it. And I had to go physically jump on them. And, and Mike's trying to put the fire out and everything. And then the military pulls up on dune buggies and... I mean, it was just just insane, ladies and gentlemen. And if they do that, I mean, again, I'm not bashing our military. I found most people in the military are actually more awake than the public. I'm not, the average cop isn't a bad person. But I'm telling you, this system, take the stuff just happened in California two days ago. I haven't even shown that footage on the radio or slash TV yet. Well, we showed it on the nightly news last night, some of it. 
But I mean, it's so crazy. You watch them shooting babies in, in strollers with rubber bullets at 10 feet away. That can kill them. And shooting women with babies in their arms because they're protesting a cop shooting an unarmed man. Again, it, look, the system's gearing up for revolution because the system knows it's doing things that are going to cause it. I don't want blood in the streets. I've, I've had enough violence in my life just growing up in Dallas, Texas. I don't mean to be ranting. I want to go back to our guest. It's that I really am concerned, folks. Every time I look at my children, I feel like crying now. But it's not a physical crying. It's a soreness in my heart. It's a pain that I want everybody to live good. I want everybody to get along. I want every, to quote Rodney King, literally, can't we all just, but there are special interests that don't want that. And they want us, just like Bob Marley said, fussing and fighting. They want us killing one another. And that's what this is about. And, you know, every, groups are all programmed against each other. So it's real when people don't like you because of what color or religion you are. It's real of those gay folks that got beat up in D.C. I mean, you know, I mean, that's wrong to do. It's, it's real when somebody comes after you and attacks you. But then you cannot sit there and play into the plan of then hating everybody who looks different than you or comes from somewhere different because now you're playing into the divide and conquer trap. Now, I'm ranting. I don't want to divert you. Uh, Larry Pinckney, now that I went off in that three-minute rant, I want to give you the floor for this segment. You've got the floor. The next you know, 14 minutes you're hosting. Uh, describe to people what COINTELPRO is, the congressional hearings, and what you and others went through, the setups, so people know what we're facing. All right. COINTELPRO, the counterintelligence program, spelled C-O-I-N-T-E-L-P-R-O, an acronym, COINTELPRO. COINTELPRO was, and I say still is, very much so, even though it's been codified in the Patriot Act and the NDAA, was a program that was meant to neutralize. And by the way, the word neutralize comes directly not only out of my FBI file, but out of the files, many thousands of other files, COINTELPRO files, to neutralize thinking, conscious, everyday black, white, brown, red, and yellow people who wanted to bring about justice and fairness for everyone in the system. COINTELPRO, the counterintelligence program, the government program, fed the feds. Now, certain uh, at, uh, components or segments, if you will, of the uh, uh, police in, in various states throughout the union were also involved. But the, co or the coordinator was federal and continues to be federal, no matter what name they give it. And it's a program where, and some of the examples, Alex, that you gave are so, I mean, they're just right. It, it's sad. It's sad when you look at it. People say, oh, this is America. That can't happen. Excuse me. This is America, and it is happening. It has happened. And if we don't do something about it, folks, it's going to continue to happen. All they have to do is keep us divided, keep us mute, keep us ignorant. Keep us, you know, on the dole, as it were. We have to take the grip in our own hands. This is what we have to do. And I don't give a damn about our color or our gender, but I do give a damn about our humanity because we are human. So getting all of us, we are human. And I, I, I guess, Alex, like you, I tend to get on a little rant every now and then. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no, break down what happened to you. This is important historical information. But what happened to me was the, the FBI had uh, attempted to set me up in many, many ways. So they decided that they would, and you can read this in the book that I've already mentioned, Saying No to Power, and we, we obtained this information under the Freedom of Information Act. Okay, the FBI said, well, Pinckney is dangerous because of his ability, and I quote, to unify black and white. That's why it was dangerous, so the FBI said. And he must be, quote, neutralized, in quotation marks, neutralized. They said, we don't know 